Hello everybody. Uh, in this video we are going to have part two of redox and chemistry in our aquariums and I'm going to be showing you this water quality controller here. It is a controller because it can control um, ozone and control your um, CO2 in your aquarium. But it has two probes, one for pH and ORP, that permanently stay in your aquarium to constantly read and tell you what your pH is and what your redox is. And that is coming up next, so stay tuned. So before we get in this video, I just want to give you an update on Chris's tank that I did a video on. This is his tank right here, completely done using a plenum. And it says, hey, Dr. Novak, I just wanted to follow up and say, wow, this is completely revolutionary. My water is crystal clear and my water parameters are perfect. I will never do another tank without a slow moving plenum. I'm going to break down my 90 gallon LG Central aquarium and set it up with a slow moving plenum. But first I'm going to build a 65 gallon with a slow moving plenum to move my community tank fish into. Then I'll break down the 90 gallon and rebuild it with a slow moving plenum and then I'll be putting Oscars in it. Thanks so much for sharing this information with us. It is truly revolutionary. Chris. Anyhow, I thought I would just hurry up and show you uh, Chris's tank, which I did a video on, and keep you updated on people that send me stuff. Here's another person's aquarium. I think a lot of people, this is what they're looking for. They're not only looking for plants, but they're looking for an aquarium with fish in it. Uh, this is a 75 gallon tank and this is using a slow moving plenum and it, got, it has quite a number of fish in it plus very large discus. But uh, this is what people I believe are looking for since 80% of the hobbyists want fish. Having a tank with no fish in it isn't their enjoyment. Yes, they like plants, but they also want fish. But one way that we can keep an eye out for our water parameters and make sure they're staying within the realm of reasonability is through redox. And today I'm going to show you this redox meter. Basically I got it so I can show everybody exactly uh, a redox meter you can buy. This one got off of Amazon hundred nine dollars and years ago you couldn't buy such a redox controller like this for that kind of price so why would anybody want to buy such a piece of technical equipment like this and though it's not very expensive for our freshwater aquariums when basically we would think well salt water people would be more interested if you watch my last video the normal Redox range for an aquarium should be about 125, 250. Uh, if it goes below that, then you need to take a base action to try to find out why it's going below that. And uh, this could be because of insults. Um, things that will lower redox is, believe it or not, uh, those chemicals that you put in like uh, aqua sauce, things like that, they will lower your redox. Uh, any fertilizers that you put into your aquarium will lower redox, believe it or not. Foods can lower redox. And uh, these insults, chemical and biological insults that you wind up putting in your aquarium are all reasons that redox gets lowered and the hobbies doesn't even know that. Believe it or not, several of the products that you do buy thinking that, well, I'm going to use this product to uh, to benefit my aquarium or to benefit my plants, you don't realize that when you squirt these products into your aquarium, 
you are actually lowering your ORP, oxygen redox potential, and you have no clue of what's happening if you put too much in, too little in, and can your tank bounce back after you put these uh, chemicals in your aquarium, can your ORP bounce back? And I'm going to show you exactly what I mean in this video by how adding a simple thing like iron can lower redox. The meter was very, very easy to install. I just put in two hooks that could uh, easily be taken off that you buy for a picture hanging. And I put them on the outside of the aquarium so I don't have to keep opening the aquarium doors just to look at the meter. Here's the back of the meter. As you see, it could take screws or the slots are designed to take the hooks. And then, of course, the next picture here shows it all hung up. So you can get a better idea of what it looks like on the outside of your aquarium. Now, in this photograph, it shows exactly what happens to your aquarium when you add any liquid fertilizers or, or anything to your aquarium. The fertilizer, the top-off system only runs for about five seconds to top off the aquarium. In that amount of time, there is iron mixed in the five-gallon tank that's the top-off tank. Look what the redox went down to. Five megavolts. This is what I mean that people don't understand when they add things to their aquariums, how negatively it can affect your aquarium and you don't even realize it. In this photo it shows how the CO2 adversely affected the pH. As you see it brought the pH down from 6.5 to 6.16 and you can see as the uh, ORP is beginning to rise this adversely gets affected with pH and ORP. Things that you don't understand what's going on with my aquarium or what is happening with my aquarium and how come it's not looking good. Now, this shows you that when you inject your aquarium with CO2, if you already have a very low um, pH, it can ad adversely affect your pH and even drive it lower, the CO2, which people don't understand. That's why sometimes if you are going to insist upon injecting 30 parts per million into your aquarium of CO2, you have to watch that you do not have a fatal pH swing that, let's say, um, your pH is normally... Uh, 7.2. And once you start injecting CO2, that could drop down to 6.5, 6.4, could even drop even lower, and you not even knowing what's going on unless you have a drop checker. But all the drop checker is going to tell you is CO2. It's not going to tell you if your pH and your buffers in your aquarium are going to help your pH. When I was in Illinois, our pH was 7.8, so I had to hook up the CO2 to a meter like this, which controlled the CO2. Then I set the pH to 6.8, so as the CO2 turned on, it would drop the pH to 6.8, and then it would shut off the CO2 and not allow it to keep dropping any further just as you saw in the previous photograph, how the pH can drop when adding CO2. So normally I like to keep my tank more acidic, what you would expect to keep discus in it at 6.5. But once you add CO2, expect it to start dropping. And this is not even at the 30% that's recommended. What the ORP is showing you and what you're looking at in these photographs, you're seeing how the redox potential, the oxidated state, is bouncing back after the insults were added, the liquid insults were added with the iron. 
And this goes with many other uh, chemicals and things that you add into your aquarium and you do not know if you are doing more damage. This explains, right now, this explains when people think they need fertilizers and they start adding fertilizers and have no clue exactly how it's affecting your pH. They have no clue how it is affecting the redox potential, the oxidative state. Remember, the higher the oxidative state, the more it's going to take care of the insults such as fish waste, uh, plant leaves decaying, wood decaying. Remember that. The higher the oxidative state, the better it is capable of handling these. When you start adding chemicals to your aquarium and you don't know what you're doing because you're listening to people and they're trying to uh, tell you that, oh, you need iron or you need this or you need potassium. Every time you add these to your aquarium and too much of an abundance, this is what happens. Redox drops. And if your redox is already tiltering on the low side and you start adding these uh, iron and things like that to your aquarium, you can literally drop it below the safety margin and start coming up with all kinds of other problems such as algae and things like this if you don't know what you are doing. Meters like this allow you the advantage of seeing that did I mess up my pH by adding too much CO2? Did I, when I added my iron, Remember I told you how to dilute your iron in a spray bottle and just spray it in there? Don't be putting several squirts in. Those several squirts will start lowering the redox. If your tank is not set up correctly, if that redox can't bounce back, these are your that's reading your oxidative potential of that aquarium, how it can handle the insults you are giving it. If it cannot bounce back, you're going to have problems. You're going to start getting algae problems. You're going to start getting uh, problems where where the fish may not look as well. And you'll be sitting there scratching your head saying, well, what did I do wrong? I listened to everybody and nobody explained to me that how water quality deteriorates just by adding some of these products into your aquarium. And they all do it. I've seen people add several products into your, their aquarium thinking that they're doing good when they're really doing bad because they set up their aquarium wrong in the first place and therefore their redox potential was not very high. Redox potential in an aquarium should be between 125 and 250. If it goes higher, no problem. That means you have a more uh, oxidative state in your aquarium. You don't want a reduction state because reduction states apply to non-oxygen environments. Like in your substrate that has no oxygen, you then fall into negative numbers, which normal ponds can go into like a, a minus 200 uh, redox because they are in a reducted state because they don't have water movement in it and therefore the bottoms go into a negative redox potential. In our aquariums we'd like to keep it at about 125 on up to 250. If it goes higher, fine. If it goes lower, this may tell you to, well, it's time to do a water change, time to clean my gravel. Maybe it's time to change my carbon that I have in my canister filter. Uh, it may be it may be time to take a base, base of action because you can see then the things that are actually in your aquarium that are designed to help your aquarium stay healthy are deteriorating. So, no, this is not a tool that maybe everybody would want. Um, you may want a, the meter like I showed you in my last video in part one. This is a more advanced tool. Um, for those people who have 55 gallon, 60 gallon aquariums and bigger, it, this may be at its price point something just to give you information about what's going on in your aquarium. There's nothing wrong with technology. I like tech stuff. So to me, it just is another tool to tell me 
what is going on in my aquarium and why it is doing so well, or it may even tell you why it's not doing so well. You know, that, that uh, you may ha be having that beard algae or cyanobacteria problems or your plants aren't looking very well. It tells you immediately, like a meter like this, your pH. Did your pH drop? Did your pH go up immediately? Uh, if your pH is too low and I have a top-off tank, I can add a little baking soda to that. So then when it tops off the aquarium, it adds a little baking soda to the aquarium to help keep the pH more stable to make it higher. And there's another complaint we get. The fluval stratum. The fluval stratum lowers the pH. That's the big problem all the hobbies are yelling about and screaming about, that, that the fluval stratum lowers pH. Having something like this where you can read your redox and read your pH tells you, uh-oh, my fluval stratum is lowering my pH. And I can see through the day if it goes up or if it goes down. If I start adding CO2, does it even shove it in lower like you just saw pictures of mine? Or does it stabilize? These are questions that could be answered by using something like this. Then you know how to take evasive action like, oh, if my pH is going too far down, a little simple thing by adding some baking soda to the aquarium will get your pH to raise once again to counter-react what the fluval stratum is doing. So with this information on hand, it gives you the power to react quickly and to adjust your aquarium so it stays a more stable environment. But I'm going to be honest with you. Aquariums that use slow-moving plenums and stuff like that, and BCB baskets, as you're looking at this aquarium, are very stable and they're usually higher in ORP than aquariums that do not use such systems because of the way it was and is designed. Remember, because the plenum is allowing biological pathways to stay open, even inside the plenum itself, you still have positive redox readings, which means it's still capable of oxidizing any insults that come into the plenum itself, not in just into the substrate, but into the plenum itself, because the biological and chemical pathways are remaining open. This really is a plus for the hobbyists to keep their water clean and keep their redox high. Now, I will admit this is not a tool that's absolutely needed, but it's a fun tool. It's a tool none the same that does benefit the hobbyist for the price point that you're getting. And let's say you have discus and you're paying $250 a piece or $200 a piece for them or whatever, or, or even if you bought them at $50 or $60 a piece and they've grown up, they're not $60 fish anymore. They're hundreds of dollars. And something like this could save the life of your animals. Or let's say you have Oscars. I'm using this for example. And you feed them heavily. You can watch your redox. Hey, did my redox, is it sending it down? Is the tank getting dirty and filthy? Is this going to cause hole in the head disease with my Oscars because my tank is filthy dirty and I did not know it? And I don't know why they got the hole in the head disease my Oscars did. This can save you a lot of headaches and trouble and let you know right away at a glance what is happening in my aquarium and how can I adjust it to save my animals that I'm taking care of. So now you see there are two ways of reading different uh, redox in your aquarium. And I like tools like this because I'm a uh, tech geek and so things like this are just fun tools to keep the aquarium hobby um, so it, it stays exciting. Okay, it does. It, it, even on goldfish tanks, this is 
good to have because then you can see is, oh, wow, my water quality is getting terrible. I need to take evasive action. Now, some people just play a guessing game, which is good. It works. It's been working for hundreds of years. You can just guess, well, if I do a water change. But remember, even a water change, it, the pollutants, if you do a 50% water change, you're only taking what the pollution is in the aquarium and knocking it down by 50%. Not 100%, only 50%. And how well can the bacteria handle the insults that you are giving it? Just something to think about. It's, it's not something that is a must-have, but it's a tool that can be used to let you know as a hobbyist how well you are doing taking care of your animals. And as you see by the pictures i just shown you, you see like the 75 gallon tank, it looks like a lot of fish in there. But the guy's not having a problem with his aquarium turning all algae ridden and stuff like this. Most new hobbyists do this. I have quite a lot of fish in my tank. They're all small fish, but that's what we want. If you watch my channel, that's what you want. You, you want to have fish and you just don't want a big, huge 75, uh, 100 gallon tank with, uh, you know, 15 little uh, neon tetras in it. No, we don't want that. You know, I don't even think I want a 20 gallon tank with little 15 neon tetras in it. That's not what we're looking for. But for some people, that's all they can put in their tank because they are unassured of the quality of their tank and their tank water. So this is an instrument that can help you. So I hope you liked the video. It kind of gives you an insight of a tool that is out there. It's available to you. It's not extremely expensive to use a tool like this. Uh, the, they're very easily maintenance, which means that I like the pH probe. I only check my probe out about every four to six months. And one time I let my probe go as long as six months. I only found it off by one point, point. You know, like let's say it was 6.5, I found it to be reading only 6.4. Big deal. And that was in six months. Always make sure you put your probes in a dark spot where they're not going to get any light because you don't want algae or anything else to be growing on them. And they seem to go quite a while before, let's say, if you need to replace your ORP probe, they're not very expensive to replace. Okay. No more than buying a brand new test kit. Let me put it that way. You, really, you should be replacing your test kits about once every year. Uh, an ORP probe, maybe you may have to replace it once every year, once every 18 months. Big deal. $30 probe. It's about as much as a test kit. And they're, you know, that's it. But anyway, uh, I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you got a little bit more insight. Uh, insight into water quality. This will tell you if your water quality goes down, goes up, can it stabilize itself after chemical and biological insults. This gives you information and a tool so you can react a little more quicker to save your animal's life. Okay, thank you for watching. Until next time, happy fish keeping.